I know you're scared. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. If I were you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know you're scared. I do too. If I were you. Skull Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings got that victory against the San Francisco 49ers in U.S. Bank Stadium. I was there for that game, and I am so impressed with our team. So impressed with our team. Absolutely amazed. And I cannot wait for the foreseeable future and for the future in general for this team to continue to shine and just keep being great. This team gave me lots and lots and lots of hope. I don't want to get my hopes up too early, but I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Sam Darnold is looking good, too. He is looking good so far. He's looking awesome. Elite, maybe. Um, but, wow, that, that's what happens when you have a good defensive scheme and a good coach like Kevin O'Connell. And whenever Kevin O'Connell is, on, is um, coaching the Vikings, when the Vikings are either even with the turnover battle or win the turnover battle, they will win games. Uh it's definitely proven statistically. Uh, I know J.J. McCarthy's out, but we still got hope for Sam Darnold. He's playing really, really well. By the way, for the Broncos, Bo Nix still hasn't thrown a touchdown. Neither is Caleb Williams. So I don't want to hear anything out of their mouths. But uh, Justin Jefferson and Dallas Turner did, uh, did obviously suffer injuries that game. Uh, Justin Jefferson suffered a quad injury. He's day-to-day. And Dallas Turner um, had a knee injury. They're also listed day to day, but they should be ready for the Vikings Texans game coming up, which in which the Vikings will be wearing their classic uniforms. And Ivan Pace, Ivan Pace, and Joe Mixon might go at it again. Joe Mixon is a Texan. Ivan Pace Jr. is still a Viking. So we'll see how that goes. I'm waiting for something that game though. Waiting for something. Um, yeah, and the fact that we won this game without. TJ Hawkinson or Jordan Addison just gives me lots and lots and lots of more hope. So I'm going to go through the statistics and what the injury report was like. Now, mind you, this injury injury report was from about a week ago. So um, it was it was before the game. So not all the stuff that I'm going to say is is update is 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 um the same as now I should say. So, like Christian McCaffrey is on IR for the Niners, so he's he's not going to be playing in the, in the, in the meantime. Uh, on the Vikings side, before the game, Jordan Addison did not practice the entire week with an ankle injury. He was he was listed as out. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle had a foot injury, didn't practice on Wednesday, limited on Thursday, full practice on Friday. Garrett Bradbury had a knee injury. Uh, he was limited on th Wednesday, Thursday, full practice on Friday. Jalen Naylor had an ankle injury, but he had full practice the entire week. Uh, Harrison Smith with a hip. Uh, Wednesday practice is unlisted. Uh, didn't practice on Thursday. Limited practice on Friday. Brian O'Neill had an elbow uh, injury. Wednesday uh, practice was unlisted. Uh, limited practice on Thursday and Friday. Stephon Gilmore had a not injury, a non-injury related thing. Like it was sort of like some some kind of a veteran rest, so he didn't play the entire week. It was unlisted for the for the first two days, and then Friday uh, he didn't practice. Ed Ingram with a tricep injury, he was limited on Friday, and then for the 49ers that same week, uh, Yatur Gross Matos, I believe is his name, uh, did not practice with a knee injury on Wednesday. Limited on Thursday, full practice on Friday. D. Winters, ankle injury, didn't practice on Wednesday. Limited on Thursday, limited on Friday. Um, Aaron Banks with a finger and calf injury. He was limited on thir on Wednesday and Thursday, full practice on Friday. Talanoa Hufanga with a knee injury, he was limited all week. Jawan Jennings, he did play on Sunday, by the way, Jawan Jennings. Uh, limited on Wednesday and Thursday, full practice on Friday. Christian McCaffrey. Limited on Wednesday, Thursday. Didn't practice on Friday. He was out for that game, and he, he was placed on the injured reserve list by the Niners. So uh, I don't know about his future. Uh, but let's go on to the stats of this game. So 
Sam Darnold, let's go to the Vikings side first. Sam Darnold, 268 yards, 17 for 26 for two touchdowns and only one interception. Yeah, that was a careless throw, but still, Sam Darnold drove the field. He drove down the field, and that game should have been a blowout by the Vikings, by the way. I mean, I predicted I predicted a 30-20 a thirty to 20 win, so I was a touchdown and a field goal short of that, so I was pretty close. But Sam Darnold could have blown out the Niners, but this revenge game was awesome. It was awesome. He should have yelled in the Niners' face and said, you should have never caught me, like Jake Browning did when he beat the Vikings in that vikings Bengals game. We don't talk about that, though. We don't talk about that. Ty Chandler, 82 yards rushing on 10 carries. Aaron Jones with 32 yards on 9 carries. By the way, for Aaron Jones, those 32 yards were still pretty dominant. Sam Darnold had 5 carries for 32 yards. He looked pretty quick out there. Justin Jefferson with a 97-yard touchdown Record setting. He set so many more records, broke so many more that game. That was absolutely amazing. He did go down in the second, in the second half with a calf injury, or no, with a quad injury. Uh, but he's he's quite likely quite likely to play against the Texans, so he should be good. Uh, so he had four catches, 133 yards, and one touchdown. Please don't ever compare this guy to Jamar Chase again. Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league, and you can't tell me anything different. You just can't. Jalen Naylor, three catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Aaron Jones, five receptions, 36 yards. Trent Sherfield with a catch and a set for 17 yards. Brandon Powell, two catches for 16 yards. Johnny Munt, two for 12. Uh, a sack by Blake Cashman. A pick by Josh Metellus off of the tip drill. So he and Cameron Bynum both tipped it, and then Josh Metellus got the pick. Andrew Van Ginkle got a sack and almost got another one of those quick, fast interceptions, but he dropped the ball, unfortunately. That's okay. Patrick Jones, the second. What an unsung hero. What an unsung hero for this team. He got himself two sacks. Jonathan Grenard got a sack. And then it was kind of confusing with Jah- with Jahad Ward because he, he got the ball. It seemed to be an interception, but it, they also ruled it a fumble. So I'm, not, I'm still not sure if that was a pick or a fumble. Uh, but it was definitely a takeaway by the Vikes. And then on punt returns, Brandon Powell, one return for 10 yards. Uh, Will Riker was three for three and got 100% of the points uh, made. Ryan Wright punted the ball three times uh, for 151 yards in total punts, averaged 5.3 yards per punt, and one of those punts was inside the 20-yard line. And another thing I must say, I saw on Twitter, on Vikings Twitter, that Matt Daniels, the defensive the special teams coordinator for the Vikings, the special teams coach, he said that the next time, if Will Reichard ever misses a field goal, he will shave, he will, he will cut his hair, like he'll get, he'll get a haircut, since he did before the season, uh, I believe he did. Uh, not like a not like a full shave bald as a punishment, but like a haircut, you know, so he'll still look nice, but I don't think he'll ever shave his, shave his head again in his life, or ever cut his hair again, because he's never missing. He's never missing. Uh, I love the way he's I love the way he's progressing. Uh, I'm not going to jinx him, though. You know, so uh, I wish him the best of luck as he continues to make these awesome kicks for the Vikings. Um, I wish him the best of luck with kicks that are 60-plus yards, which he's got nailed down. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And the Vikings defense through two weeks, by the way, switching to the defensive side. 11 sacks, which is first in the NFL. Three interceptions, tied third in the NFL. 23 points allowed only, tied third in the NFL. Four turnover takeaways, which is tied third in the NFL. This is an elite defense right here. Brian Flores is an amazing defensive coordinator, and I cannot believe I met that guy last year. That is incredible. And then being at the Vikings-Diners game was just so electric. You love the skull chant, the entire uh, Minneapolis uh, uh, Vikings fans, the, the entire city of Minneapolis Vikings fans. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings fans everywhere, just absolutely incredible. And the stadium is way louder than, than how they perceive it on TV, that I can guarantee you. Um, it was awesome in those VIP seats, by the way. So I could still hear the crowd noise, but not as much as I would have if I, if I were sitting in the regular seats. Sha- uh, Shaquille Griffin, uh, cornerback for the Vikings, he had three targets uh, against, or no, he allowed three targets, uh, two receptions allowed, 14 yards allowed, zero touchdowns allowed. So he was targeted three times, only allowed two receptions in those three times for 14 yards, zero TDs allowed. Zero TDs allowed by Shaquille Griffin. That's Brian Flores right there doing his thing. Dallas Turner didn't get a sack. He got injured too, but 
You know, he's expected to play against against the Texans, where the Vikings will be wearing their classic uniforms. Uh, offensive guard Blake Brando through two weeks. Through two weeks, he allowed zero pressures, zero sacks allowed, and eighth highest PFF grade among guards on offense. 109 snaps played, and he did not allow any sacks. That's an elite player. Dalton Reisner's spot might be in trouble, but I hope he comes back soon and ready to play. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Blake Brandle and Dalton Reisner together instead of Blake Brandle and Ed Ingram because uh, Ed Ingram, he's a cool guy. He's a cool dude. But as far as playing, I have to admit he has allowed quite a bit of pressures and sacks, but I still like him as a person. He's pretty cool, pretty awesome. Uh, Vikings edge rusher Jonathan Grenard, he got his first sack as a Viking against the Niners and had 12 total pressures in 2024 so far, which is the third amongst all edge rushers slash outside linebackers. Uh, the top PFF grades for the Vikings from the Niners game uh, on offense, Garrett Bradbury. How did Garrett Bradbury get on this list? No offense, by the way. Uh, 84.4 PFF grade, 79.8 PFF grade for Ty Chandler and Justin Jefferson. Uh, Christian Derrissaw with a 78.1 PFF grade. Jalen Naylor with a 72.6 PFF grade. Jalen Naylor had a nice touchdown, by the way. Jalen Naylor is looking elite so far, at least looking really good. I don't want to jinx him either. Uh, no injuries for Aaron jo for Jalen Naylor or anyone. I pray for great health for all the players and staff and coaches and everyone, uh, for all Vikings fans, all NFL fans, just the entire world. No bad stuff. Uh, anyways, on to the defense. Uh, Patrick Jones, I believe that is, 88.6 PFF grade. Blake Cashman, 80.9 PFF grade. Shaquille Griffin, 69.0 PF PFF grade. Josh Metellus, uh, 68.5 PFF grade. I love the way Joshua Metellus is progressing. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle, 66.2 PFF grade. And the Vikings, uh, two Vikings offensive linemen have yet to allow a sack this season. Offensive guard Blake Brandle and offensive tackle Brian O'Neill. He and Christian Derrissaw are the best duo in the NFL. Christian Derrissaw against the Giants, he used a Giants defender, I believe it was Kayvon Thibodeau, and shoved him into another Giants defender. He he brings players to the ground. He just he just does amazing things. He's the second coming of um, Trent Williams, in my opinion. Christian Derrissaw is a mini Trent Williams. Trent Williams Jr. might even become better than him as he continues to grow and progress. Who knows? Um... Even Ed Ingram managed to destroy Niners, Niners offensive um, outside linebacker. There it is. Uh, Leonard Floyd ba on back-to-back -back plays. That was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. And after week two, quarterback Sam Darnold, who knows the, Niner the Niners offense from his time with them last year, so he knows this kind of stuff, and he played super well against them, scrambling out of the pocket, so quick on his feet, uh, so something that another guy on the Vikings couldn't do, who, by the way, what an awesome win on primetime by Kirk Cousins against the Eagles. For that, I'm grateful for him for that. Uh, that sounded weird. For that, I'm grateful for Kirk um, for beating the Eagles. No one likes them. 72% uh, completion, 10th in the NFL. So he's the top 10 completion rating uh, for that game, percentage I meant. Uh, 476 passing yards, wow, top 10, ninth in the NFL. Four touchdowns, tied second in the NFL. 111.8 passer rating, which is eighth in the NFL, top 10 in nearly every main category. All of this is per Vikings fan page, very accurate news source for, uh, for the Vikings. He doesn't work with them, but he, he reports as if he does, man. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome source and an awesome guy. Love Vikings fan page. If you want to check him out, he's on Twitter and Instagram. Um... It's Vikings with a Z at the end and then fan page. The V in Vikings with a Z at the end, by the way. The V in Vikings, the F in fan, and the, pay, and the P in page are all capitalized. Vikings fan page. Got to go check them out on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Sam Donald has led the Vikings to a 2-0 and record. So no more of this narrative about it's just the Giants because we, we beat the Niners, who have never beaten us in U.S. Bank Stadium or anywhere in Minnesota that we've ever played them. So... One of the main goals is to maintain our running game, our defense, and our offense, and also win or at least tie the turnover the turnover battle. I feel more confident when we win the turnover battle, but either way, tie it or win it, we still win games. Tie the turnover battle, win the turnover battle, we win games. 
That's what I love about this team as well. Um, there's lots of hope for the Vikings. This is not an overreaction. The Vikings are legit. They are the top, top in the NFC North. We're number one, first place, 2-0. and no, no other team in the NFC North is 2-0. and I mean, look at the Chiefs. They shouldn't even be 2-0 and right now. Like the we 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 potentially could have had a better record than the Chiefs, who are also two and zero, but they got bailed out by the refs against the Bengals. Uh, miss they missed some holding calls, but I'm not gonna get into that because uh, not really worth talking about all that. Uh, I got all the respect in the world for Patrick Mahomes though, so awesome guy. And last thing, referring to our schedule, the Vikings schedule. Makes me hopeful, even more hopeful. And you want to know why? In this four-game stretch, we have the potential to either go two and two at the worst, and at the best, four and zero oh, or three and one. Uh, I just, I just feel like we cannot find the first loss. As Vikings, as the voice of the Vikings, the radio commentator PA would say, Paul Allen would say. Uh, can't find the first loss. And you know what? I can't find it either, Paul Allen. Can't find it either. Uh, um, <sighs> lots of hope. Lots of hope for this team. Lots and lots of hope. And lastly, when you look at the schedule, right? We just won against the Giants and Niners. Then you go into the, uh, you play the Texans in week three. The Texans might be a hard game. That might have, that might be a loss that 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 might be but we, it, let's say let's say we go through the schedule and win these games so let's say we beat the Texans let's say we, we beat the Texans we beat the Lions twice and from there on in midseason we won't have much issues we we won't be playing the Packers in Lambeau in December or early January and we play in Seattle uh, late in the season so that might be a loss we don't really do good out west so the Vikings have the potential to either go. 10 and 7 at worst, or 11 and 6, 12 and 5, 13 and 4, or 14 and 3. You know, if you want to be really crazy, 17 and 0. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. That would be absolutely incredible. Because the come on, the the Ram, the Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Bears, Cardinals, Falcons, and the Bears again don't really pose a threat, do they? It's only the, it's only like really the, like the Lions twice and then the Texans. That really pose the biggest threat during the schedule. Maybe the Rams pose a bit of a threat too, but I could be wrong about that. But Puka Nakua could go off, so uh, got to be aware of that. Got to be cautious. But yeah, this is looking good, and even the, even the Jets game in London. So uh, we we play the Packers in Green Bay in two weeks. So I can't wait to see Aaron Jones go off against them. Uh, we don't get Aaron Rodgers until the week after that. We get Aaron Rodgers against the Jets in London. So that'll be awesome. But I got hope for this team, and I cannot wait for success in the future. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Skull Vikes, 17-0. <laughs> got to have the hope, man. Skull. Going to love this team. Already do, and always have. I know you're scared. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. If I were you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know you're scared. Yeah. I do too. Follow you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You 